So let's start talking about the Veblen hierarchy. So this is really analogous in a lot of ways to the fast-growing hier hierarchy to create finite numbers, but now we're actually going to create ordinals with it, and then we're going to put it into the fast-growing hierarchy, combining the two ideas. So what we're going to produ produce is a family of functions. So the beta labels which function we're talking about. They're all phi sub beta, and the gamma is the input. And beta and gamma are both going to be ordinals, um, often infinite ordinals, but not always. Okay. And we're going to use repetition and diagonalization and define everything recursively. So phi sub naught, phi sub zero, phi naught, is just omega exponentiation. That's what we were talking about in the last video. Um, that's what produces all the cool infinite ordinals up to epsilon naught, and then it can be used to create a lot of other stuff as well. So phi sub zero of zero, that's the absolute base case, that's equal to one. That's where we start. Then, um, to really explicate this and provide a model for the later uh, things we need to know about phi, we're just going to be very explicit. Phi naught of gamma plus one. Suppose we understand phi naught of gamma. We want phi naught of gamma plus one. All these guys are going to be limit ordinals, the outputs, and so we need to sneak up on them and give explicit fundamental sequences for later use. And we just do what we did before. It's just uh, this is just omega to the gamma, remember, and then times n. Okay, and then as we take the limit, that's going to be basically times another power of omega, and that's going to be omega to the gamma plus one. Okay, so it's really just reviewing in a slightly different notation what we had with the ordinal, with the omega exponentiation. If gamma is a limit ordinal. Then it's very simple. The way to sneak up on phi naught of gamma is just sneak up on the input and put it into phi naught. And this is going to be universal for anything uh, whenever the input is a limit ordinal. So that's, that's something that's kind of in common with all the phi's. Because phi is a continuous function, basically. Okay. So how about further phi betas? What about um, if beta is a successor, we're going to do that recursively. If beta is a limit, we're basically going to use diagonalization. So phi sub beta plus one, if we know how to do phi beta, how do we get phi beta plus one? Well, we gotta start somewhere, let's do it at zero. And that's gonna be a limit ordinal, so we gotta sneak up on it. So notice there's these three things you have to keep track of. So it's a little bit intense, but you get used to it. So the way to sneak up on the first value of the new function is you apply the previous function, phi beta, which we're uh, assuming is understood, you just apply it n times to zero, okay? And then the way to sneak up on the next value, once you've produced, say, v, phi beta plus 1 of gamma, what you do, and this is going to be a little familiar from the previous video, you don't just take that and apply phi beta to the n of it. The reason for that is that um, phi beta plus 1 of gamma is going to be so big that it's a fixed point of the phi betas. And so this wouldn't do anything to it. But if I just add 1, that's that trick of like the epsilon naught plus one that we saw before. You get out of the fixed point trap, and then you can take this previous value of your new function, apply the old function n times, and then send off to end off send end off send n off to infinity. So we're taking the limit of phi beta applied over and over and over and over and over and over, over again. That's why we're always going to get a fixed point of phi beta. Because if you take the limit, like here we took the limit of omega to the omega to the omega to the omega to the omega, you take the limit of that, there's no point in doing omega one more time. So there'd be no point, if you didn't add the 1, there'd be no point of, of applying the phi beta over and over again. But with the plus 1, it actually does do something cool. And then, as usual, if gamma happens to be a limit ordinal, the new function on gamma, oh, you just take that same new function on the stuff that sneaks up to gamma. You've already defined those, because those are smaller than gamma. Even though it's this new function, we were assuming that all the previous values have been defined. So, wow, that's already a lot. We haven't even gotten to where beta is a limit although that's actually easier in a way. Um, this one right here is probably the, the, the most complicated thing. So let's do some examples. What about phi 1? We know phi naught is just omega exponentiation. What about phi 1? Well, we, let's start with phi 1 of 0. Let's sneak up on it. That's phi 1 of 0, the nth term in the fundamental sequence. OK, that's phi naught to the n of 0. Oh, OK. So that's going to be, uh, well, phi naught of 0 is 1, and then uh, omega to that is omega, and then omega squared. Oh, it's just a tower of omegas. And I think it might actually be n minus 1. Let's see. Because I'm applying it to 0. Yeah, because this is really omega to the 0. So there's actually n minus 1 omegas here, I think. OK. Um, and that fits in with what we were doing before, with, with the n minus 1 showing up. OK. So uh, phi 1 of 0 is none other than epsilon naught, because it's the limit of these towers. OK, that's interesting. 
What about phi1 of 1? Let's sneak up on that. Well, that's going to look very familiar. We add 1 to phi1 of, of 0, which we know is epsilon naught. OK, that's it. Then we apply omega exponentiation, the phi naught function n times. Hey, we're building a tower. That looks very familiar. And again, I think it's actually n minus 1. Not that it matters a huge amount, but when we do this with fundamental, with the fast growing hierarchy, it is going to make a some, somewhat of a difference. OK, so phi1 of 1 is the limit of that tower with epsilon naught plus 1 at the top. That's what we were saying is epsilon 1. Okay, so again, note how the plus one is crucial. If I hadn't done that, this would just be epsilon naught. It would just it would just uh, be in that fixed point trap. Okay, well, it's not too hard to believe. I'm not going to go through the the proof or anything. Phi one of k is just epsilon sub k. It's basically saying in a slightly new notation what we were doing with the omega exponentiation and the epsilon numbers before. And as I was claiming at the end of the last near the end of the last video, is that in fact um, this holds for any ordinal gamma not just a finite number k. So let's look at that. Phi1 of omega, sneaking up on that, you sneak up on omega, you put it into the phi1 function. So that's phi1 of n. OK, that's epsilon sub n. So phi1 of omega should be the limit of the epsilon sub n's. So I look at epsilon naught, epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 3. It's an increasing sequence of ordinals. You just take the supremum of that. That's probably going to be an epsilon number. It sure is. It's easy to prove that, that it's fixed under the omega exponent map. And it deserves to be called the omega -th fixed point of this map. Gamma goes to omega to the gamma. Um, so in fact, it turns out that you can prove that no matter how big the ordinal is, that epsilon sub gamma is just exactly what phi1 is giving us. OK, so phi1 is the epsilon sub blah, sub, sub blank map that labels all the epsilon numbers. So that's pretty much matches up with what we had before. It's a, a way to put omega exponentiation and the epsilon numbers into us the same footing. And then this is only one. We have barely gotten started. So let's look at phi 2. OK. Phi 2, OK, we've got to start out phi 2 of 0. OK. And then that brackets n, by definition, is we just take the previous function and we apply it that many times to 0. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. We start with 0. We take epsilon sub 0. That's already a pretty hard to understand big thing. Then we take epsilon sub that. We look at all these, these funky ordinals that are so big that you take omega to them, nothing happens. If there are fixed points. And you take the epsilon naught one of those. And then you do it again. And you just keep putting those into the subscript. Okay, So this is where it gets really powerful. That any time, you know, this is the, the whole moral of this whole sequence of videos. Any time you have a free subscript or input, you can do something with it. You can take a limit. You can iterate. And here's where iterating the idea of epsilon sub blah. OK. So that phi 2 of 0, th these guys aren't even phi 2 of 0 yet. Phi 2 of 0 is the limit of all those guys. OK. So we are way far, far past what we thought was a pretty darn big and cool infinite ordinal. And it's the first fixed point of the epsilon sub blah map. This is the way to get something so that if you put another epsilon, a bigger epsilon right here, and say sub that, if it's an infinite chain of that, it's not going to change. So it's the first fixed point of the epsilon function, which is phi1. And in fact, that's the most elegant way to talk about the Veblen functions, that phi2 labels the fixed points of phi1, and phi1 labels the fixed points of phi0, phi3 is going to label the fixed points of phi2, etc. I'm not going to emphasize that, because I want it to be a little more constructive. Um, but that's really, that's, that's the sort of the one sentence description of the Veblen hierarchy. Okay, so now I still hadn't told you what happens if beta is a limit ordinal. Uh, we've gotten through two so far, and you can kind of picture maybe what happens for three and four and five. What about if you get up to omega and beyond? Okay, so we just diagonalize. Very much the fast growing hierarchy idea. Phi sub beta of zero, we've got to start with that. Uh, the way to sneak up on that is you look at all the previous phi's you've defined, or at least a fundamental sequence worth of them, and you look at what they did to 0. And then we have to use the plus 1 trick one more time. If you're applying it to a successor, then here's a function, our new function phi beta, with a limit ordinal uh, as the subscript. The next value of that, how do you sneak up on it? Well, you take the previous value, you add 1 to get out of the fixed point trap, and then you look at what happens if you do phi of all the different different ordinals that sneak up to your given ordinal on that. Okay, 
So we're looking at the limit of like phi zero, phi one, phi two, phi three, etc. If this was phi and omega, for example. So the plus one is to uh, to get out of the fixed point trap, because otherwise we'd be taking phi beta of gamma, which is a fixed point of all previous phi alphas with alpha less than beta, and we're applying previous phi alphas, so that would be stupid. But if we just add one, it's okay. Now, I have to say, you might think this is just going to go on forever and ever. There is always something that's going to kind of terminate this and, and make this trivial. What if we had phi sub beta of 0 equals beta? So even if we put the, our ordinal in this slot, which is the more sensitive by far slot that actually ups the function level and not just into this slot, the, or the input of the function, what if we put it in there and nothing happened? And we'll, we're going to come back to that. Um, what happens if we if we're we're kind of at a fixed point of that operation? Okay, but let's go. Let's do an example. Oh, and I forgot to put in one more thing. Uh, if um, gamma is a limit ordinal, then we just do the usual. Um, we don't even worry about changing the function because we just take uh, phi beta and then we just take gamma brackets in. We've already got, if this is a limit ordinal, we've already got a bunch of previous values, and we can take the limit of this, this sequence. Okay, and so that's if uh, gamma, oops, is a limit. Okay. Oops. I don't know why I care about the color of that. Okay, so for example, phi sub omega, that's obviously the first place to start when that's a limit ordinal. Okay, phi sub omega of zero, the way to sneak up on that, is you take phi sub omega of n, brackets n of 0. Oh, that's just phi sub n of 0. OK. So we're going to, uh, now what was that? OK. What was phi sub n of 0? It was take phi sub n minus 1 and apply it k times to 0 and take the limit. So that in itself has a pretty big definition. And then to get phi sub omega of 0, we're going to take the limit of all those guys. OK. So that's already going to be huge. So that's going to be phi naught of 0, which is 1, phi 1 of 0 is omega, uh, uh, sorry, is epsilon naught, phi 2 of 0 is this funky thing, and then the limit as you go further and further and further. Okay, that already is pretty hard to, to contemplate. And that's just phi omega of 0. Phi omega of 1, we uh, sneak up on the index here, so that's going to make this phi sub n. So we take phi omega of 0, which is already this funky, huge, cool thing. We add 1, and then we do phi n of it. And we do phi dot, phi 1, phi 2, phi 3, phi 4, phi, take the limit. And, oh, for example, phi epsilon naught. Ooh, what's that going to be? Wow, phi epsilon naught of 0. How to sneak up on that? You take phi sub omega of 0, which is already this gigantic thing. And then you take phi sub omega to the omega of 0. And then phi sub omega to the omega to omega of 0. And you take the limit as that tower gets bigger. So now we're putting towers of exponentials in the subscript, which is an incredibly powerful place to put something of a Veblen function. Whew. Okay. And that's just phi sub epsilon naught. Okay. We could get bigger. We, we, we will. Okay. Now, um, we're going to combine that with the fast-growing hierarchy. Um, good place, another good place to probably break, break up the videos so they're not too big. Um, we're going to start putting these in. I've finally given you the final definition of all the, the aspects of the Veblen function. Now let's actually create some honest-to-God finite huge numbers in the next video.